Hey! Yo, hey everyone, Andrew here, bringing you another video, and today we're going to be doing my Andrew Cutter Pick of the Week, in which I give you guys the comic that I've enjoyed the most, and a look of the week in general, along with any other updates that may come up. So with that said, let's take a look at what I got this week, which I already reviewed. So if you're curious about in-detail reviews about these comics, just go check out the videos I already posted up. We had Wonder Woman, issue number one. Birds of Prey, issue number one. Nightwing, issue number one. They're all in issue number ones. Batman, Red Hood and the Outlaws, Catwoman, and Supergirl. Now, this was a kind of a mixed bag of week. There was a lot of good titles that actually really wowed me, and there were some titles that really kind of upset me. Let's talk about the titles that wowed me, and in particular, the Andrew Cutter pick of the week. There were three titles in particular that I liked the most, and they kind of tied for first place, although there's one that stood out a little bit more than the others. Those comics would be Batman, issue number one, Nightwing, issue number one, and Wonder Woman, issue number one. All these comics were my favorite comics for this week, but if I had to pick one comic in particular to be my issue number one, it would have to be Batman. No, not because Batman's my favorite character. As I said in my issue number one review of Batman, I'm going to be more critical on this comic than I am going to be for anything else, with maybe the exception of Wonder Woman, because I'm very critical on Wonder Woman because I love her a lot. But Batman issue number one was a really good issue. It was inviting to new readers while also being good for old readers. It had action, it had detective work, and it established the characters, the direction that they're going, and the motivation. There was a nice little twist at the end, although I have a theory on the twist at the end exactly what's going to be going on, but I'll get to that after I talk about the week in general. Um, and I really did enjoy Batman. So Batman issue number one was my pick of the week. Um, Wonder Woman would have been my pick for the week. But I like Batman a little bit more. And although I do recommend this to everyone because this was a good issue. Um, it just wasn't as good as Batman's. But still, really good. Uh, both five stars. And Nightwing was a good issue. But it did have a few problems here and there that I did not like. So it didn't quite make it up there with Batman and Wonder Woman. As for the week on a whole, we had these issues which were the three best issues, Batman, Wonder Woman, Nightwing. Then we had issues that were okay. They had some faults to them, but they, they were still pretty good, like Birds of Prey and Supergirl. Supergirl being very safe, Birds of Prey just being okay. And then finally we have the issues that I really didn't care too much about. Catwoman started off very nice, but at the very end, the last scene really bugged me. Spoilers for anyone that didn't read it. The last scene is, ready? Again, I said spoilers. The last scene is her hooking up with Bruce Wayne. And while I have no problem with this, it's just the way it's handled. It seems like she's forcing herself on him, which is a little awkward. And at the same time, it just, well, a little graphic. I know Judd Winnick is saying sexy, sexy, sexy. But I don't want to see Bruce Wayne do every single possible position with a chick, whether it's Catwoman or anyone else. The most I want to see Bruce Wayne in a sex scene is him taking off his shirt, then the morning, next morning, with him in bed with the woman. Leave the rest to my imagination. But, I mean, it really was the ending that hurt this comic. It was pretty good up until that point. Red Hood and the Outlaws just disappointed me. There was a few good points to this, mainly just Jason Todd and some of the witty batter going back and forth, but Starfire was just destroyed in this. And now that I think about it more and more, I'm even more and more upset about it. Arsenal is kind of a dickhead, but it's Arsenal, but still it's not the witty, fun, charming dickhead Arsenal, it's just Arsenal being a dick. And the story really didn't intrigue me all that much, which is kind of interesting, but a few people out there that I've talked to on my Facebook page said that they were intrigued by the issue and they were wondering to see what would happen later on. But maybe that's just me. Like I said, this is kind of a mixed bag. There's a lot of good, a lot of meh, and a lot of okay. Um, it was still a fun week. I got a lot of comics that I did like, and I have to say, from what I did from the good, the stuff that I did get that was good, Batman, Nightwing, and Wonder Woman, has been some of the best comics that I've read so far. Uh, so, like I said, mixed bag for the week, but you can't have them all. Um, as for, oh, uh, one thing is, when it comes down to the Batman twist at the end, and again, spoilers coming up, so if you do have not read the issue, 
Spoilers. Um, and this kind of goes for Nightwing also. So ready? Spoilers. Um, at the end of Batman, is revealed that uh, Dick Grayson's DNA is put under underneath the uh, fingernail of the victim and that he is possibly the murderer. We all know this isn't the case, but it's still an interesting thing that they're throwing at us. My theory is this. Uh, Scott Snyder said that although it's not necessary to read both Nightwing and Batman, things will bleed over from the two. So if you're reading Nightwing, you might notice some of the concepts that happen there bleed over into Batman and vice versa. Again, it's not necessary. You can read Nightwing alone and be perfectly fine and not have to read Batman, but again, concepts will bleed over. The second thing is that in issue number three of Batgirl and issue number four of Nightwing, we see Batgirl 1 fighting Nightwing in her issue cover, and then issue cover 4 for Nightwing, we show Nightwing fighting Nightwing with Batgirl in the background. This makes me think that there's a doppelganger going around, and this also supports the fact that there's an assassin trying to kill Dick Grayson because he's a murdering bastard. So, uh, that's just a little theory that I'm throwing out there, but again... Who knows what will happen. Um, any updates? None too much, other than the fact that I finished the fourth book for Harry Potter and I have a review all set to be put up. I'm probably going to put it up over the weekend. However, I am unfortunately going to have to take a break from reading for two reasons. Actually, three. One is school's getting pretty hardcore. Two is that I'm currently reading some Star Wars novels and I want to finish those up before I dip back into Harry Potter. Three is the girl that I've been getting my Harry Potter books from to read is at college and she only comes back every other weekend and she forgot to give me or the phoenix which is the fifth book i think so uh so unfortunately i don't have the book to read but it kind of all works out because i wouldn't be able to read it right away i'm looking to get the book maybe sometime next week maybe for my friend uh, not the girl, but actually one of my friends who's read the books and he has it at his house. He's just lazy and doesn't want to bring them over. But we'll just have to wait and see. But yes, on a whole, this week was a mixed bag. Some really good titles, some okay titles, and then some titles that just disappointed and were bad. So with that said, I'm going to end this video here. This is Andrew saying peace out for now.